Hi there, I'm Trent Goodmanson. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be doing another slideshow presentation of this painting. And this is the photo that I'm going to be doing. It's of my daughter. And I am doing this subject because there's a show in Jackson Hole, Wyoming that I want to participate in. And I figured with the Old West feel there, I might as well go with this type of theme. I'll be working on a 20 by 16 inch panel that's been gessoed. And before I get started, I actually need to create this grid pattern on my image, as you see here. I've left the grid pattern one inch apart, so they just fall on the actual inch marks. And that way I'm not going to be too nitpicky about details, it's just a guideline to help me get going. Essentially I use the grid to help me put everything in the right place so that I don't end up painting a perfect face and perfect hands, only to be in the wrong place, <laughs> or the wrong size. Alright, well let's get going. You saw the brush I'm using, and it's a pretty big one, just a big mop to put this background color in. It's essentially just brown, black, and white uh, with with medium to make it easier to, to wash it around. I'm trying not to be too careful or, you know, be all the same color. I want it to be interesting so it can so show through the painting. All right, now I'm just mixing up some more of that color, black, brown, and, well, a tiny bit of white and some medium. And I'm going to start laying in essentially not a graph, but I'm using the graph or the grid on my image to to transfer some key points like the forehead and the nose the chin back of the neck things like that just key points on the on the figure and on the rest of it that that will make it easier to to judge where everything else is so then i just naturally go from those points over to an actual drawing and those points keep me in the right place so i'm still looking and it's important to to use my brain instead of just copy. I'm not copying back and forth. I am, I'm trying to, to see, and then I turn over to the canvas and, and see those points, and I just paint what I see according to those points. All right, so a word on this rifle here that she's holding. This has been a, an old gun that's been in my family for years. My dad uh, gave it to me a long time ago. And uh, so I use that as the model, but it's not accurate for this like Old West thing that I'm going for. So I, I've referred to images from the internet so that I can, I can accurately portray the, the story that I'm going for here. And as you look at this for a second, you can tell that my stock is not straight. But here you can see that I've, I've changed the, the shape of, of certain parts of the, of the rifle there so that it uh, looks more accurate. All right now I'm starting to mix up kind of a flesh tone. Um, it's mostly in shadow here, so it's a kind of a dark flesh tone, but um, I'm also using a smaller brush. This one's a red sable. It just gives a nice soft feel. It's great for doing close-up faces, also detail work. And here I am laying it in to the face and the arms. You know, it's just kind of, I'm not trying to get it exactly accurate, just as close as I can, because it'll change in a minute. And here I am picking picking out some reds and yellows to add to that. This will this is just based on the that flesh tone under color, but in hands, elbows, um, noses, ears, especially, uh, it gets quite a bit warmer. Cheeks is doing here, and then you saw me putting a little bit of yellow on the top of the the forearm in one of the other ones. So I'm trying to look at the the differences here and uh, you know, just make it accurate, or accurate enough, make the changes accurate, I should say. And now you can see that I've put in some, some of the darks um, under the chin and uh, around the ear with the, the hair, you know, a little bit of the shadows. I haven't gone quite completely dark yet, but you can see that I've put some red in the lips. You can tell here that the nose is a little bit more orangey red. And here I've put in, or started to put in the eye, That's just the darks of the upper eyelashes and the irises. Um, and now I've begun to add that same dark 
quality to the nose and the the corners of the mouth it, just little key points in the in the face where it needs to be a little bit darker and of course where that darkness exists in other places i just kind of naturally move on from the face to the other parts such as the hat which you see here now comes the fun part i start adding highlights first here's a quick before shot before the highlights and here's after you see that i haven't gone all the way white yet i'm going to do that in a second but uh, here you can see that I've gone in the eye, the ear, the, the nostril, on the lower lip, just these reflections. And then now I'm starting to put in the actual bright highlights. And nose isn't quite accurate. I'll fix that in a second. But wow, that really came to life, didn't it? With just a one, two, three, four, five brush strokes. And then moving on to the other, what I would call highlights, I guess, or light parts, just down in the collar and such. All right, so now I'm mixing up um, kind of that just gray shirt color it's it's not actually the shadow it's really the the light coming in from the right side here from a window or an opening and it's actually cool so this gray represents the light and I'm gonna go darker in the brown tones for the darker parts of the shirt but right here following the same principle I'm actually mixing up a flesh tone again coming from that right side and I'm gonna start putting that that tone in the arm again re representing the light and so you can see here i've started to model that form on the arm you can see some muscles and tendons happening in there again with the other arm by the way if you're hearing random chicken noises it's because i'm sitting on the back porch by the chicken coop and uh, so i've got a little friend next to me here <laughs> moving on so you can see that i've started to form the fingers uh, boy if you can get the fingers and hands right well in the face then the whole rest of it can kind of be yeah whatever you want and it'll still look like a person for the most part and i think it's underrated the fact that once you paint the things around the fingers and hands and well anything that it actually helps a lot to to form that figure so you're painting the background and here you can see where i've darkened the, the hand hold there um, it's dark and it helps form the the fingers Moving back to the face, just some minor touch-ups on that nose that I mentioned earlier. And now I'm going for that, for a bigger brush again. I think it's the same one. And I'm starting to go into the background color. Ah, I'm just, just sort of playing now at this point. Going from light on the right side to dark on the left side. Kind of playing with what, uh, you know, where the light is coming from. And now that I've got that, I can go in with a palette knife. This is sort of the last Thing I do in a painting just for texture. I've started you know, just playing with random shapes and textures and then I broke it. You could see in there that I actually repaired it once before but uh, that's no good. So, and I already tried welding it. Aha, uh -huh, but I do have another one. <laughs> I've got five or six of these. Ahem, moving on. So, <laughs> um, just back into the shirts, the shadow, the edges, you know, just perfecting things. Um, you can get really sharp lines, nice edges with the palette knife. And as we see here, I haven't actually done a whole lot with the palette knife other than simplify the, the shirt, but you can see that the painting looks to be, um, I think, actually, I think I'll call it done. And it's a good thing, too, because my deadline for this show is actually in an hour or two. <laughs> All right, so nothing like a deadline to keep us going, right? Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will try this format again if you like it, but let me know. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.